Good afternoon. My name is Lizette Uriah. I'm the uh, bilingual specialist here at Pizzi. Um, at this moment, I would like to thank you all for joining us for this final webinar in our Empowering Dad series. Uh, at, the, at this time, we have Dara Williams, and he will be giving us um, new, a new set of skills to help you become more engaged and active in your child's education. Daryl, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for joining us one last time. And the webinar is all yours. Thank you so much, Lizette. I really appreciate you uh, uh, getting us started today. I'd like to welcome everybody for joining us for, as you mentioned, the, the final webinar in this particular series. Um, for those who uh, may be joining this series uh, late or, or this is your first involvement with the series, uh, we wanted to uh, provide uh, information specific for men and dads. Um, and I want to be clear, you know, this has been a, a, a focus on dad and fathers, but do know uh, that these workshops, these webinars are really open to any uh, any male who's supporting, you know, children. Um, so if you have a critical role in a child's life, um, this may apply, you know, so it could be granddad, it could be cousins, uncles, um, you know, but any, any, uh, any male, any positive male or any male rather, you know, who uh, is, is intimately involved in that child's life can, can benefit from this stuff. So I just want to be clear about that, but we wanted to be intentional about um, you know, having something for dad. Uh, we've, we've found, and, and in my work, and I'll talk about it a little bit um, as we move through the presentation, but um, what I found in my work is that, um, you know, there's a need for it. There's a, there's a need to, um, for dad to have some support um, specific to him. Um, and, and you'd be amazed what happens when you get a group of guys in a room, um, actually great things happen, you know, um, from all different backgrounds. So it's been really great um, so far. So I appreciate Pizzi. I'm the uh, Virginia Department of Education um, for this uh, for this opportunity. So today we're going to get into our uh, dad, the protector um, webinar. Previously, uh, if I get this last work, here we go. So previously, we uh, I led two webinars, uh, one Skills for Dad, uh, where we just really talked about some different ways that dad can just be engaged and partner with the school, you know, just some real practical tips. And I'll say on that practical note, you know, I'm not a heavy, um, this isn't anything heavy with, with numbers and data, things like that. I mean, we need data, we need that type of information, but know that, you know, my purpose is really to encourage and empower you guys um, and just give you some practical tips and just things for you to think about and remember um, through your journey. Really, that's it. You know, I don't want to make it too heavy um, at all, but I do want you guys uh, to feel good about, you know, the, the process or so have a better feeling about, you know, your role and how you can really, really um, have a great impact on your child's uh, future, you know, just from being involved and engaged. And it doesn't have to be hard. And you don't have to know everything because I don't know everything. Um, so I just want to put that out there. <clears throat> so we also did su empowering superhero dads, um, similar uh, concept, but we talked uh, more about uh, dad's role uh, in the IEP process. And, you know, just, you know, you know, what, what he needs to do throughout that process. So that was more pointed uh, to that topic. But today, um, I'll introduce myself first, um, let you know a little bit about me from Richmond, Virginia, uh, born and raised, been here all my life. <clears throat> um, uh, graduated from Virginia State University. I'm a proud Trojan. Um, uh, Worked in education since 2012, um, and my time in education has been spent uh, around family and community engagement and fatherhood work since that time. And I've worked uh, with Henrico County Schools and Richmond Public Schools. Um, so I've, all I know is, is family engagement and how that correlates to 
uh, a, a child's academic success. Um, I started D Will Consulting uh, this year and uh, early early this year, 2019. Um, really in response to what what I saw as a need and to give myself um, a little more wiggle room to do do things that I, I think is, are important and things that I wanted to do. So I embarked on that journey, a um, little nervous in doing so, but it's been really great uh, so far. I have two sons, uh, ages 15 and 13. Uh, so I have one going into the 10th grade and my other son, he is going into the eighth grade. Um, so, and you know, I love those those guys. Everybody's big and they need jobs, um, but that uh, that's me. So before we really get into content and we, and we go through pre the presentation, um, and I haven't been doing this with the other webinars, but I typically do this exercise uh, before we even really get into a conversation. I think it's good to gauge the room. Um, to see where people are, you know, some, sometimes folks show up to to uh, workshops that you know you may not be feeling it, feeling it that day. Uh, it could be a bad day. Uh, it could be a great day. Um, but kind of check yourself. You know, where are you? Where are you today? You know, is, is are you on red? You know, leave me alone. It's a bad day. Are you yellow? Are you just you know you're telling people, hey, you know, I'm okay, but just be cautious. Or are you on green? You know, and you're ready to go. You're feeling good. You're feeling great uh, about today. It's Friday. Uh, last, maybe it's your last work day of the week. Maybe you're off today. Um, but, you know, how do you, maybe, you know, hopefully you feel great. Hopefully everyone is on green, but we understand if you're not. So just a little temperature check uh, for you to think about it. Like, you know, where am I today? You know, how do I feel today? Uh, but I feel great. Uh, so I hope that, that, you all also are feeling great. And if you're not, I hope you feel better um, somewhat after this, uh, this webinar. So uh, the game plan for today, fellas, uh, we will, we're just, we're gonna do a little reflection, um, uh, not much, but just for understanding. Uh, we'll reflect on ourselves. Uh, we're gonna introduce some protective factors um, for dad and we will break down you know, dad's role in those particular uh, factors. Real simple. So self-reflection. Um, I like this quote, self-reflection is a humbling process. It's essential to find out why you think, say, and do certain things, then better yourself. That's the key. Then better yourself after you have reflected. Um, I think we all have to do this. Uh, at some point, you know, especially before you start certain things or you embark on a journey, whether it's a, uh, uh, you know, something going on in your marriage or you're about to start a new job or, you know, maybe something's going on, but um, it may be beneficial to take a moment. So reflect on your own school experience. You know, as we talk about helping our kids in school, um, I know for a fact that your own experience in school can translate over with your own children, you know, and how you act or uh, react or your relationship with the school um, could be um, a reflection of your own, your own school experience. Maybe you were the model student, you know, you made, you were in clubs, you, you had, you know, honor roll all the time, you were, you know, just had a great, school experience, you know, teachers loved you, principal loved you, you know, you were just that guy, you know, and, and which is great. Or maybe you were the middle of the road student, um, you know, school's okay, I, I, I graduated, my grades, you know, you know, I was like, yeah, maybe a BC student, um, you graduated, maybe not everybody knew you, um, but you know, you're decent, had a decent experience, maybe you played a sport or not, but you, you know, you had a, a decent time. Or it could be the guy who didn't finish school, you know, or um, maybe yourself um, have some, um, some struggles. Um, maybe you have a, a disability that you were dealing with or what have you, you know, but you're, maybe your, your situation in school was just horrible. And that can have a, a serious impact on how you um, 
perceive your child's school and what you think is supposed to happen and, and et cetera. Or maybe you just keep your distance because you're not comfortable getting, you know, going to the school. Um, but reflect on that. Like, think about it. Uh, think about your upbringing. You know, uh, how was your family structure when you were growing up? Um, versus what your family structure is now, you know, with your own family, how, you know, how is that? How was it coming up? You know, for me, I really, you know, looking at my upbringing, have both my parents um, in the household. Um, they did the best they could. I love my parents greatly. Um, but I realized, you know, as an adult with my kids now, like, you know, my parents just did the best that they could. Um, and they didn't do everything right. I don't think anybody does. Um, but, um, you know, think about that. You know, like I, I can now see some of those things. I'm like, man, you know, that probably wasn't the best thing to do. You know, um, thinking about my parents, maybe, that you know, they made mistakes. We all made mistakes. But think about your upbringing. Did you have a two-parent household? Um, was your dad involved at school? You know, I think that's key. You know, we see if our dad was that the... You know, maybe you modeled after that. Uh, if he wasn't really coming to the school or the PTA meetings, or maybe it was mom all the time, but you know, think about that. Um, think about your fears and shortcomings. Those affect how you go about your, how you approach things and, and how um, maybe how your approaches with the teacher or in, in meetings at schools and et cetera. But you know, what are your fears? What are your shortcomings? Because you need to really name those and face those and understand it's okay we all have fears and shortcomings but you need to know what those are and then see if determine is that impacting what you know is that prohibiting me from really helping my child you know my own fear and shortcoming and what do you do you need to take care of yourself and deal with that mm. um, your values your values and strengths um what are those things? You know, reflect on that. Reflect on your value as a man, as as dad or uncle or who you know, whoever's on. Um, but reflect on your values, your strengths. Those are important. Um, don't forget that because every everybody on everybody who's logged in, all you guys are, are valuable. You all have strengths. Um, but what are those things? So we're going to talk about five key protective factors today. Um, one, resilience. Two, relationships, knowledge, support, and communication. We're going to just run through these and really just talk about, you know, dad, your role, and how you plug into these, um, these factors. Um, now, these particular factors were uh, developed from the center of study of social policy, not necessarily around, um, you know, children or families with disabilities per se, but there, there are some correlation. We are going to, and I'll show you how we will, um, you know, merge in language or how it does apply. Um, so, parental resilience, um, man. There's no book to be a, on how to be a parent when you, you know, now, let me, let me back up. Now, people do write parenting books or blogs or things like that and give you information. But really, I mean, there's no real manual to tell you how to do this thing the right way or whatever people in, determine what the right way is. You're going to run into some issues. You're going to have some, um, you know, um, barriers or obstacles or uh, problems occur. I mean, that's just life. You know, we're all going to run into to issues, but I would encourage you all. Number one, now I'm a I'm a I'm a Nas fan. Anybody on here who um, who knows who Nas is, a hip hop artist. Um, but no bad energy. Um, he has a song, no bad energy, and that that I think that's step one. You know, keep the bad energy away, and that means yourself too, man. Be you know, don't bring the bad energy in yourself. Um, we don't want it. You don't need it. That is not going to help you um, help your child. So be resilient, but put that no energy, no bad energy, rather. 
we want positive energy throughout the whole process. You're going to need it. You're going to need the positivity because you're going to run into some rough times. We all do. Uh, but no bad energy. Understanding, too, that failures lead to success. You know, it's okay to fail. Uh, it, it sucks, you know, when you fail. Uh, I don't think anybody out here is um, hoping to fail necessarily. Um, and failures can hurt, especially when you are talking about your children, um, how you can support your children, and maybe you feel like you're failing at, at doing that. You know, but understand that, you know, you're going to have to fail in order to win. You, you got to lose at some point. Um, you got to. I think actually losing um, is going to teach you something, but it will help you to appreciate the wins um, that you will get. Um, but know that failures lead to success. You're going you're gonna to learn from those things. So, guys, take time. You know, if, if something went wrong, through the process that, you know, you went to the school for a meeting um, and it was just bad, <laughs> you know, just bad um, all the way around. Um, how could we do this better? You know, how can you turn that bad situation into something positive? Um, same, you know, with, with grades or classes, um, you know, talking to my, my kids or talking to um, kids in general, just about, you know, classes, maybe, maybe failing a class, um, but it's not the end of the world, you can turn that around. Um, I think a lot of us have um, uh, testimonials or, um, um, you know, examples of failures that we've had, but how, you know, you have to be resilient in order to get to that success. So don't let the failure um, stop your momentum. You know, keep pushing, guys. You know, keep pushing keep moving, uh, be resilient, you know, because it's for your child. I mean, you see this picture, um, you know, you got dad. I mean, he, he looks happy, um, but he's, you know, he's he, helping his child. He, he's, you're doing that. You're holding your child's hand through life right now. Um, so, you know, keep pushing, man. You got it. You know, you guys got this and trust in yourself, believe in yourself and know that you got it, but just be resilient. And that's with anything. That's just in life in general. Um, social connections for your for your child and really all children are vital. Um, it, you know, I've, I have, have some family I could, you know, I, I have that um, I think they've suffered from not having enough social connections in school. Um, those are important and it can start number one just regular attendance making sure that your child is at school every day on time is huge and especially um, early on um, even in preschool even in kindergarten um, you know even in kindergarten think about uh, too many absences can cause your child to fall back uh, fall behind in kindergarten and you're thinking well what are they really doing in kindergarten oh you know she can miss some days not necessarily it's I, it's vital for your children to be in school um it, every day unless they're you know unless your child is sick or something's really going on but it's really vital to get your child um to school even if they miss one day um your, your child can fall behind quite a bit um there's a, a stat that says, um, and I believe this is all from attendanceworks.org. That's a good website, uh, fellas. So um, check it's attendanceworks.org. It'll give you some tips and some information, but think about it. You know, by the sixth grade, uh, high absences are one of the three signs that a child may drop out of school. You know, sixth grade. So, you know, it's important, you know, help your child um, and getting getting to school on time. Uh, I tell my kids all the time, look, you know, being on time is important because when you get older, um, having good attendance for your job is going to be important because that's your livelihood. So you would, you want to practice that now, you know, so getting to class on time, getting to school on time, um, just trying to be on time in general um, when you have places to go um, is important because you will need that skill in the workplace um, in order to hold a job. Um, so, you know, help your kids out, you know, set, you know, a, a, a bedtime, a set a routine, set a routine at night, set a routine in the morning. Um, 
um, have a have a, a support system. Hopefully, you do have a support system. But you know, if it's some, if something happens, you know, how else can you get your child to school? You know, if something comes up or um, or what have you, and you're not able to do it or, or whatever. Um, but do you have a backup plan for somebody to do that? Um, Encourage your children to be part of um, after school activities, uh, sports, or clubs, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but all of these things foster social connections that we all need. We need to have connections with people. Uh, so put them in a position where you're providing different social opportunities for them um, to build their network to, to you, know, you know, talk with um, children who may or may not be like them. Um, um, or not, you know, that diversity is great um, and important. When you get out here in the world, you're not just gonna uh, be around one type of person. Um, so even, I mean, children with, um, and I'm gonna say abilities, um, not disabilities, but children with abilities, um, it's the same. You know, those social connections are important, going to different events, um, such as events like PTC um, putting on. I know their PYE Summit is coming up. Uh, soon. Hopefully you guys will be registering to attend. Um, that's coming up in, uh, I think it's September, and I apologize, I don't have the date, but you can check their website. But, you know, providing those opportunities, taking your child, um, you know, out and being around people is important for them to interact with people, understand how people are different and how to interact with those different people. Uh, diversity is 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 so important in our world and our culture for our people for our kids uh, to do that you know take them somewhere outside of their box you know there are a lot of children and this is just in my uh, experience working in education working um, with a number of, of uh, low-income families or not even just low-income low families but just families in general sometimes you're in your box like you just stay in your little world, you know, and, and don't really venture out. Not every family takes vacations. Not every family uh, goes out to eat or has taken their uh, children to a uh, Red Lobster or something like that, you know. Um, but, but, you know, venture outside of your box and your own comfort zone uh, because that could model and perhaps push your child to eventually do the same, you know, and your child, you'll see your child blossom and do things that maybe you never uh, thought about doing yourself um, coming up, but, you know, you're proud to see them step out and be courageous and do something different um, that's uncomfortable. Uh, being uncomfortable will actually foster growth. Uh, I've learned, <laughs> I've learned this, you know, sometimes you need to, um, Sometimes you need to be put in an uncomfortable position or uncomfortable space in order to grow. Um, it's the same for our kids. You know, put them, you know, put them in, in different um, environments and, and situations. Um, show them something different. Show them that, hey, there's a greater world than just where we live right here. Um, so do that. Do that. Very, very important. Um, moving on to... Uh, the next factor, uh, knowledge, uh, specifically of parenting and child development. Um, in this graphic, it shows 90% of the child's brain development happens before age five. 90% of child's brain. That is huge. But, you know, before age, before age five. Um, so early childhood years are just as important um, for children with abilities and developmental delays or not. Um, super, super important. Um, it, it's never too early. Never, never too early. So what do you do? I mean, it, it, take advantage of learning opportunities. You know, seek those. Um, if, if your child's really young, if there's preschool uh, age, um, you know, do they offer any, any workshops? Um, does the school, your child's school, offer any opportunities for you to learn about early childhood years and, and so forth? Are there webinars out here? You could, nowadays, I'm pretty sure you could find information online. There's a ton of information online. Uh, but learn about how your child's brain is developing early and the things that you can do to, um, for school readiness. Um, you know, keep in mind that, you know, your child... And really, every child develops at a different pace. 
Um, so know that going in. So you may uh, see other children that are, you know, moving way ahead of your child, but no, your child just, just may not be there yet, but you need to know and understand that. Um, understand, uh, understanding of assessment and diploma options is important. Do you understand those, those options? Do you understand um, the rights that are, are um, involved? Uh, I believe there's three, I believe there's three diplomas that um, children with abilities have access to. Um, do you know those? Uh, I believe it's the Advanced Studies Diploma, the Standard Diploma, and the Applied Studies Diploma. You know, are you talking to your child's school about those things? What makes those different? Um, ask those questions, and don't be afraid to ask those questions, but you need to learn. You need to really get as much information as possible around these type of things. Um, understanding the, uh, the whole assessment process when you talk about SOLs and how that impacts your child um, is important. You know, making sure that they have accommodations um, set in place, those type of things. But understanding and knowing the process is important. Um, we talked about, uh, uh, we've talked about this a little bit too with uh, exposure, exposure for children um, at an early age. Um, exposing them to different things. Again, it goes back to my previous slide of, you know, getting outside of your box, you know, taking kids out, letting them see some things, um, go to the park, um, you know, do things, uh, do things with your child to expose them to something different, um, science museum, things like that. Um, partner, partner with your child's school um, early, um, um, early, early. Uh, as soon as you can, you know, try to establish some type of a partnership uh, or the early childhood program if they're not in a, a school yet. It may be in a preschool center or something like that. Um, but partner, partner with that school um, on your child's development. And again, just try to, you know, understand their process as much as possible so you all can have a great working relationship, but also to help your child um, develop, especially early. Um, understand early, early childhood, being, uh, making sure your child is ready um, for school, whatever that means um, for you and your child, because again, every situation is different, but you need to understand the process and learn as much as you can. So reach out to your school. Also check um, BDOE's website. Um, they have a ton of information on, on the website and I'm sure you all, um, are doing that, but if you're not, check their website out and get some information around um, IEPs and uh, 504s, you know, these things, and maybe maybe you don't have a clue about what any of that means. What is a, five, a 504? What's the difference? What is an IEP? Um, but there's a lot of information out there that you guys can um, can have access to. It just It just takes you seeking it um, and, and getting what you need. So support, um, everybody needs support, um, everybody. And so I put, you know, mentors for children and parents. And I, and I think about it to the, you know, I, I, I volunteer my time as a mentor. Um, I've been doing that for, with uh, a couple of different uh, groups and, it's so valuable uh, for kids to have a mentor or someone else that they can talk to, someone else that encourages them and lets them know that they are awesome and that they, they're they gonna um, be great. Um, same with parents and adults, honestly, we need mentors. And I don't know, like, think about that for yourself. Do you have a mentor or someone um, that you can, uh, that you know will support you. And it's not always advice. You know, some people, uh, I think people default to wanting to give advice and sometimes advice is great. Um, but advice could also muddy the waters a bit. Uh, I'm always careful with advice. Um, but, you know, we talk about you know, we'll talk about certain things or what have you, but I, I'm I'm a little careful at actually giving advice because you ask 10 different people their advice, so you may get 10 different answers of what you should do. Um, but I do think it's important 
um, for mentors to, to be in place for yourself, but also for your parent, um, your child. So um, if you don't already have that type of a, a, a relationship with with others, maybe, you know, maybe uh, and maybe you have a mentor and just didn't realize, like, oh man, you know, this this person is my mentor. That happened to me. I didn't even think about it um, really um initially and, and I, until i was having a conversation or someone asked me rather you know do you have a mentor and i had to sit and think for a minute um but i did you know and i do uh, but never really put that type of tag on it um but i said yeah, i do have a mentor but it, i had to think about it but I, I wouldn't be where i am i would not be where i am without people in my corner that support system whether it's family whether it's close friends uh, where there's uh, uh, staff at the school, whoever it is, um, you know, you, you need that. Um, don't be afraid to express your needs and concerns, um, especially to the school. Now, how you express those needs and concerns um, matter uh, greatly. Uh, I, you should advocate for your child. That is number one, that is super, super important. Um, be an advocate for your child, but do it right. Um, um, again, come with it. And I mentioned this in a previous webinar, but have that partnership mindset um, when you are expressing needs uh, and concerns to to the school. Be respectful um, when you're doing that. I know sometimes, depending on the topic or what's going on, um, emotions can run high, but emotions can also get us in trouble or get in the way. Um, so do your best, um, again, talking to your mentors, your support system about these issues. Uh, maybe you need to do that first before you um, contact the school or express your, your needs or concerns uh, with the school. But uh, we, you know, schools want to work with families, uh, want to help you and your child and do the best uh, for you and your child. Um, some places do it better than others let's just be honest um this is true but we want to help those places that are not doing such a great job um but again you know be expressive make sure your needs and concerns are really out there and that's not just to the school uh, but do that for your family as well with your family be you know make sure you're communicating and expressing um what you need as far as support because you maybe you're just um kind of going with the flow you know, guys, like sometimes we just go to go with the flow. Um, you know, mom got mom has it. I'm not going to worry about it, so to speak. But you still have questions or you feel like maybe you feel like an outcast over here or maybe you're not comfortable with the process or decisions that are being made. Um, but you haven't really fully expressed like what you need out of the process, like how you process information uh, could be very different from how um how mom processes the information. So what are your needs? You know, how do you, what do you need in order um, to really be able to help your child? Um, do you need uh, text, you know, constant, do you want to get text messages? Do you need, um, do you need regular meetings? Do you need to be regular meetings? Do you need phone calls? I don't know what it is, you know, but whatever it is for you, um, make sure you express, express that. Do you just need moments? A moment to yourself to do value that sometimes you need that um, self-care is important because as you're going through the process depending where you are with your your family your child and your situation um, a lot of times because we are just going 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 we're not taking care of ourselves so utilize your support system um, take care of yourself whether that is just you know maybe you like to just sit in silence uh, maybe you like to go fishing. Maybe you want to go get a massage. Uh, maybe you're, uh, you know, you like to work out, but you need those moments to take care of yourself as well. Um, and connect with other dads um, and other men, other parents uh, who are going through uh, similar, uh, similar um, challenges or going through the same thing that you may be going through what i find and, and i always and i love it I, I, and really it's my hope after every workshop um when i have a group of men or people anybody in front of me i want um i want folks to talk to each other i want you to 
um, build a connection with someone in the room that is going through the same thing as you. You know, we share information, people are sharing stories and you may hear something and you're like, oh man, I thought it was just me, but it's not. You know, understanding that other people are going through the same thing that you're going through and may have um, some tips on how you can manage that process. Maybe they've already gone through that stage of the game and now they can show you what they did to be successful throughout you know that that can those those connections are important you need to feel like you need to know that you're not alone and you need to know that you have other people um on your side that can help you help you through this process that support is huge uh, for you support for your kids um, is vital so you know connect guys don't be afraid to connect that networking thing is 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 a real 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 big help um, and you will value it um, along the way so social and emotional competence of children uh, I believe this is the last uh, protective factor uh, but it's important for your child to have a healthy uh, self-esteem and self-confidence, um, belief in their abilities, uh, self-efficacy, uh, but them believing in themselves and being confident. Uh, but that a lot of that's going to come from you, you know, and, and instilling that in them, um, helping them to know that they're great regardless of the uh, what's going on, but their ability is not going to limit them uh, moving forward, you know, all children need to have that confidence in themselves. Uh, we, we've seen a lot, we've seen it where it's gone bad. I've had a situation, I've had family members um, uh, who have attempted to hurt themselves, um, you know, due to self-esteem and confidence issues. You know, that's real. Those things are real. Um, suicide rates, you know, things like that, that's real. Um, people deal with a lot, but we want to do our best uh, as dad, you know, be, be that champion, be that cheerleader for your kids and let, letting them know that they're awesome and that you believe in them uh, so they can believe in themselves. Because eventually you want, to, you want them to be independent. You know, you, you want them to have that self-determination that is going to um, help fuel them for the future. Uh, I think that's the goal at the end of the day when you get, you know, you're trying to help your children uh, get through the school years. Uh, so when they are done with school, um, you know, that they can, uh, you know, live, hopefully um, be able to live independently if, if their ability is um, one where they can live independently. Um, but, you know, all children, we want, you know, I want my kids to be independent and to take care of themselves. I talked to them about being able to not rely on um, others necessarily uh, for certain things. So, you know, be able to cook, be able to uh, uh, wash your own clothes and, and, and so forth. Those things are important. Um, and, I, and I think, not even I think, the, another big point um, here is for them to advocate for themselves. Um, being able to express their needs and their feelings um, and for them to connect with others. Um, it's all about, it's all about them. It's all about them feeling uh, great about themselves and knowing that they can do anything that they want to do um, and them having a voice. Um, we say this a lot in, in the world of engagement. Uh, when you're talking about engaging families and helping families, that's something that we talk about a lot, you know, is how do you advocate for your child? How do you advocate for yourself? And, and, and how do you help your children advocate for themselves, but to do it the right way? Um, um, you could be, um, there's, there are many different ways you can advocate. Uh, some are a little more friendly than others, you could say. Um, but teach them, show them that, that, that um, and help them to be able to be expressive, to, um, to share what's going on with them, uh, because that is going to be, that's, that's going to be something, I mean, for all of us, I mean, we talked about a little bit on the other slide, but for all of us, being able to express yourself to say what you need is, is crucial, is crucial, um, in their development. So help them with that, you know, whatever you need to do, um, 
as dad, I think, but don't discount yourself, you know, make sure that you are in the mix and you are there. Um, and that, that leads to my final, uh, this is final, I don't think that my final slide of content anyway. Um, but this part, this is not one of the factors, the five factors that, that we talked about, but this is just in general for you guys just to be engaged, um, actively engaged, um, actively involved dads can uh, participate in meetings, you can advocate for your child, uh, understand the special education process and your rights, um, assist with homework, study habits, um, but of course, you guys just being involved can make a huge difference. Uh, in your child's life, huge. Um, yeah, I don't even know if, if the guys always fully understand how vital you are to the process. You know, don't just leave it to mom, you know. Um, you guys need to be at the table um, as much as you can. Know that you, um, uh, if you can't, and I mentioned this on, on previous webinars, but if you can't be at the meeting physically, um, they can set up a phone call, you can be there via phone. You know, there are different things that you can, you can do to still be involved. So, um, you know, break those barriers down. Don't let certain things be a barrier. Um, bust through the barriers, you know. Uh, bust through them, go around them, whatever you need to do, jump over the, the barrier. Um, but don't, don't let these things stand in your way of, of um, helping your child, you know, to be successful um, in school and beyond um, school when they're, when, when they're done with that. But you guys just stay engaged, you know, ask questions, um, you know, learn all you can. If you're not familiar with terms or some of the jargon or things that are being thrown ar around, you know, ask, you know, Stop the meeting for a second. Could you could you explain what what this means? You know, make sure you're totally um, understanding the process, and and just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask questions. But you guys, man, it's not. I don't think it's it's not difficult. What I'm asking is not difficult as far as the engagement piece. Um, but you guys, I, I you know, I think you guys will. And I don't even know who's going to listen, obviously, or who's on, but um, I, I, maybe I'm just optimistic in this way. But I think um, I think everybody, number one, wants success for their children. Sometimes we just don't know how. And we can do it in some of the most easy um, and tangible ways. And sometimes it's just showing up, you know, um, but being consistent and just knowing the process and just being that cheerleader for your child. Um, is important and, and and again like no bad energy like keep it positive as much as you can um, be a positive voice for change be a positive advocate for your child your child sees all of this happening um, that is going to transfer that makes the whole process better um, the school is not on edge because they're not worried about you blowing up about the situation um, you're partnering with them you're solution oriented um, all those things are vital um, to the process. So that is all I have for you guys um, today. This particular webinar, we didn't, uh, you know, do anything with um, uh, comments or chats. Through, uh, usually, there's a chat box that we would have throughout the, pro the process, but with this one, we're just giving the information. And this will be posted on, I didn't put it on here, I didn't have it at the time, but this, this and my other webinars are posted on Pete's YouTube page, and that is Pete's Virginia. So Pete's, P-E-A-T-C, Virginia, spelled out. Um, you can find uh, all the webinars that I've done, along with more videos and information that Pete's uh, is posting um, for families and for dads um, in general. But uh, take a look at the YouTube. I believe uh, I saw where the, the first two webinars are posted there. So if you missed out, you could go and check those out. I believe this one will be posted, I think, within a week or so um, on YouTube. But um, my phone number is listed here. My, you have my email contact. 
Uh, but this has been really great. I, I appreciate the opportunity from PT to, to do this, um, realizing how important it is and how we need to make sure we're communicating to the fellas, um, to the dads, to the men, um, knowing that, you know, guys want to support and help their kids too. We just don't always know how to do it. We're just not always comfortable, um, et cetera. But I'm, I'm happy to help out um, in any way I can going forward. Um, I will say that we are planning a youth fatherhood summit. Um, this is for young fathers ages 15 to about 20. And right now we are looking at Saturday, no, Saturday, September 28th, um, probably, I think from 10 to 2, uh, tentative time frame. Um, but that, that information, I believe, will be coming out uh, from PC soon. We'll be putting out the flyer and everything for that soon. Um, that is not going to be on the web. Um, that is going to be something that we're going to hold um, actually here in Virginia, uh, in Richmond. Um, so if anybody is around or if you're in the area and you have a, a young 15 uh, to 20 year old um, male, a father um, out there who could participate, we'd love for him uh, to come and um, get some, some great information that we hope will be helpful uh, to him and his child while he's on his journey um, as a young, young father. So again, uh, thank you all so much uh, for joining us. I hope that this was um, uh, helpful to you guys. Uh, sometimes doing the webinar just seems like I'm rambling and just, and just talking, but uh, I, I hope it was really, I really do hope it was helpful. And I do hope that we can um, maybe continue this, this effort going forward. But Liz, I'm done with this. Um, I could turn it back over to you, but uh, I want to just, again, thank everybody for joining us. Thank you so much, Daryl. Uh, what a wonderful experience it was to hear you talk and give us all this information yeah. and just empowering all these dads out there. So thank you everyone who joined us as well. Uh, we hope that you can um, Find this video on the uh, YouTube page that Daryl just mentioned, so you can find it at PT Virginia, all spelled out. Um, you'll find all this information along with uh, previous uh, webinars that we've had in the past. So um, please feel free to get more information there if you think you missed anything. But again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to be able to provide you with more webinars coming up soon. All right, so thank you, Daryl. Have a great one, and have a great one, everyone. Thank you.